and three o'clock in Egypt and nine o'clock in China, I believe. So welcome to everyone. We're so happy for the second day of our alumni conference. Um, <clears throat> we're happy to see people come back from yesterday and new people that weren't able to make it yesterday. Um, if you do want to watch yesterday's conference, it will be available on our website. And today's recording will be available there soon as well. So you can watch both days um, if you are only able to come to one. Um, before we begin, the rest of the TCLP staff is here and they want to say hello as well. Are we there? Yeah. 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 Hi, everyone. <laughs> There we go. Now we can see each other. <laughs> so, you want to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Samantha. Hi. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Ever. Hi, I'm Zada. And I'm Elise. So, okay, great. Um, so, we're first going to start with a fun video. <clears throat> I'll pull that up quickly. <coughs> So this is our TCLP 10 campaign that we are um, doing for the TCLP 10th anniversary. So we want to share this with you. Okay, here we go. Hello, this is Hassan from Freedom Christine in Press School. I love this video because it was my life and experience, which helped me to build a network of relations with people over the world. Also, it helped me to give up the pictures of my culture, country, and religion. Okay, so that is a hashtag TCLP10. 10th anniversary video from a um, participant last year, Azat. And um, if you would like to make your own 10th anniversary video, uh, you can do so. It only takes 10 to 15 seconds. And um, you just say why you love TCLP. So the more of these that we have, the better. And please um, send them into our email address or let us know um, if you'd like to do one. Um, Great, so now let's begin day two of our conference. And like yesterday, the format of the session will be a round table, which is a little bit different than past um, alumni conferences. So each panelist will be called upon um, to give answers to various questions about their experience related to various aspects of educational leadership based on their unique perspectives and backgrounds. So each panelist today, um, is coming from their own experience and um, will be sharing their best practices and lessons learned with us. Uh, we want to remind you that you are all leaders. Um, we have the four excellent panelists today, but you are all leaders and you all have an impact in your own ways. So we hope that the advice and the lessons learned um, and best practices that we talk about <coughs> excuse me, today uh, will provide you with fresh ideas and inspiration um, for your own teaching and leadership. So today I want to start off with the alumni introducing themselves and their current roles in their educational communities. And then we'll jump into our first question. So, um, okay, great. So Hanan, uh, we'll start with you. You are on. Your microphone is on. My, yeah, um, Excuse me, the, 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 um, I can hear you uh, well. Okay. Okay. Can okay. You, Thank you. you. Introduce yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Hanan Gaudet. Uh, 2012 13 alumni, uh, TCLP alumni. I am a middle school uh, principal now uh, at Nostra City, Cairo. I'm responsible for everything the supervising teachers and students, uh, the discipline in the school, the schedule, and other stuff. Uh, 
Um, I'm also working as a teacher for Arabic for the, um, the U.S. schools. Um, um, actually, with my host school, you know. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, Zhang Hong, can you introduce yourself next? Sure. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Zhang Hong. And I'm from Zhengzhou number 47, Miran High School. And currently, I'm the director of Foreign Affairs Office, and I'm in charge of some international programs. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. And okay, I participated in TCLP in the year 2009 and 2010. Yeah. Great, okay, thanks. Um, is that, could you go next? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I am Mazat uh, Gadil Mula. I am a TCLP, a TCLP alumnus of uh, year 2010-2011. I was in Berlin at Notre Dame High School, Iowa. Uh, I, I, I was uh, the, uh, the former uh, principal of Bani Mazar uh, Government and Distinguished Language School. And uh, now I, had a con uh, I have a contract. I work in Saudi Arabia, KC, in Riyadh. Uh, as a deputy principal in uh, Atal Aruba International School. Great. Of course, uh, uh, my role inside the school, I manage teachers affairs, students affairs, and of course, the building up. Okay, great. Um, and Chen Yen, can you introduce yourself next? I'm here. Hi, everyone, and I'm Chen Yen, the al alumni from 2011 to 2012. And right now, I'm the supervisor of English teaching and researching group in Changchun, the first experimental primary school. Thank you. Okay, so those are our panelists today. Thank you for introducing yourself. Um, we're going to jump right into the first question. Um, this first segment will cover achievements of our alumni TCLP leaders. So, um, Cheng Ya, we'll start with you um, for this first question. Mm -hmm. After you came back from TCLP, what new ideas, skills, or strategies have you introduced to your school or district that allowed you to become a leader in your school? So ideas, skills, and strategies that you've introduced to your school. Mm -hmm. And during my uh, study in, from TCLP, and then I came back to my school, and then I introduced a student center study to my uh, all the Chinese English teachers to our school. And also, um, I have some lectures on this uh, student-centered strategy for all the Ch Chinese English teachers of the whole city and to give this lecture to uh, share the experience with them. And also, I introduced the um, five C's principles of teaching a foreign language. This is really, really important for the English teachers. And then it just like to open a window for them because um, Usually, um, the teachers uh, focus on the grammar or some structures of the sentences, but they do not know the, the real purpose of teaching a foreign language. First of all, uh, the 5C uh, principle is about uh, communication, culture, connection, comparison, and community. And so with these five principles, it helps the teachers a lot to teach a foreign language. And then, uh, it helps our teacher to um, just uh, do well in their teaching design. So it really helps our uh, ch Chinese English teachers a lot in preparing their lessons and also in uh, reflecting their lessons and also um, in, in just, um, uh, just uh, discussing the whole teaching plan with each other and share their experience with them. Um, also, I think um, just uh, the strategy uh, from TCLP that I learned uh, is that um, uh, about this culture, I think it is really important, especially when we teach a language, we have to focus on the uh, culture. That is the background of the, uh, this language. So um, because I see more, I, I know more, and then I introduce more to my Chinese uh, English teachers, and they, they learn a lot. And then they feel that um, the students can feel the charm of learning a foreign language. So the students became more and more interested in learning foreign languages. That's it. Great. And can you tell us a little bit more about how you introduced these ideas? Um, did you do trainings, or how did you go about 
um, communicating these ideas to your school and to your students? Yeah, I, I just have some lectures on student-centered uh, strategy because you know Chinese teachers are quite used to um, uh, quite used to the uh, self-centered, just as the teacher-centered. And so um, usually, and then on their class, they just uh, teach their students grammar, and then just um, I ask you, and one by one, and then they answer the questions. They do not focus on um, the attitude to uh, it, the student's attitude to English study, and also they do not focus on um, how much do they get or they understand uh, the teacher. Uh, so um, I have this teacher uh, student centered. The first of all, we have to focus on the student themselves, and then we have to uh, to look upon ourselves as the students, as the teenager that. Our level is just on this level, and then, uh, for example, we do not know these words, we do not know these structures, and then uh, we will just um, to, and then if we are just sitting in the classroom, and how can we deal with this situation? So uh, we really uh, just uh, uh, let the students try to suppose that you are a student, and then you what, what you want to get from your teacher, and then the teacher will understand the strategy a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so you did the lectures and then you found that the other teachers were able to apply these methods that they had learned about? Yeah, that's true. And uh, gradually, they just uh, changed their ideas, they changed their mind, and then the, the thing that, oh, yeah, I have to find that the, the points that the students are really interested in, not only the points that I'm going to teach. And then the more you found the students, uh, the, the, the students of the... I mean, the interest of the students, and then the students will like your uh, classes more. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, so student-centered teaching is one of the big things here, one of the big differences between teaching in China and Egypt and in the United States. So um, it's great you were able to bring that back and that the teachers there found it to be useful and helpful for their students. Um, Zhang Hong, you also um, talked about some trainings that you did. Um, can you talk about some trainings that you've led or organized for teachers at your school or district? Um, and how did these experience further develop your leadership skills? Okay. And first, uh, about language teaching. Since I'm still teaching English, and uh, uh, I uh, sometimes give some teaching presentations or demonstration classes to the teachers in my community, my city, and even at provincial level. As, as Ms. Chen uh, just said, uh, many teachers in China, they are still very used to the lecturing things. And uh, so uh, after uh, I returned uh, from TCLP, uh, I think the theory of multiple intelligences theory has influenced me a lot. So in my class, I try to organize uh, many uh, class activities to uh, meet the diverse learning styles of students. And this makes the classes uh, more student-centered. And first, the teachers in my school, they learn and we share the experiences and even my city, I think that is from myself and also, uh, since my school is one of the national bases for the international promotion of the Chinese language and the culture, and um, the school has the responsibility to send Mandarin teachers abroad every year. In order to uh, uh, have more uh, qualified Mandarin teachers, every year the school will organize some training for them. Some of them are just Chinese English teachers, but uh, since they, they will um, take the task to teach Mandarin, we have to invite some experts about the, this, uh, this language teaching and uh, give them some classes. And I think this is uh, uh, about Mandarin teaching. And also the, uh, about the cross-cultural exchanges. Right now, uh, I'm the director of the Foreign Affairs Office and every year, um, first, we, we host um, like uh, summer camps from different countries, like the Chinese Bridge uh, for uh, American students every year. And we send students abroad to have uh, visits 
and uh, exchanges. I think this helps a lot about the uh, global education uh, in the school and in my uh, district. Great. Yeah. Um, good, and we're going to touch on global education again in a minute, so um, we will come back to that idea as well. Um, Izzat and Hanan, you have, <clears throat> you've also done some trainings, and yours, um, a lot of them have focused on technology, which is something um, that is really interesting. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of the other teachers joining here um, can learn from that. Um, is that we'll start with you. Um, can you talk about some efforts that you've led to incorporate technology in the classroom? And how has this helped with leading your school? You mean technology? technology. Uh, yes, we're going we're gonna to start with is that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, before I was a principal, I, I had two uh, leadership roles. I was the head of uh, the training unit in, inside my school, where I trained uh, teachers on different topics. Of course, using technology is, is one of them. Also about classroom management, uh, teaching uh, language, especially the cultural aspect uh, of, uh, of the language. Uh, after being a principal, uh, we introduced what we call the identification. And uh, I think in, in, uh, in a coming question, I will talk about uh, identification in details uh, about this experiment because maybe it is uh, a unique one in, uh, in our country. Uh, also, uh, using some, uh, we, we worked as a program called the TILO, TILO, which is, uh, it, it is a, a program. It, it is a program uh, supported by the USAID uh, in which we use some different applications in, uh, inside the classrooms to facilitate the learning process. Uh, maybe if, if you want to, me to, to talk about identification now, uh, it is okay, but I think it is coming in another question. Yeah, let's, um, let's talk about um, talking about technology just for the minute. And I'll switch um, to talk to Hanan too, um, to hear about how you've integrated technology into your school as well. Uh, actually, my, um, my school is using technology even before I took this position. Uh, but what from the Blend School and from my virtual using um, as a virtual teacher, uh, I implement this to my, uh, to my students, my um, teachers colleague uh, so they now can uh, talk to each other if, if she's she's not like absent the teacher is up from the school um, she can go to, to her computer and she try to um, to Skype with this students because we don't have the program um, for for the virtual teacher actually we don't know how to uh, create it but we can use Thing. Um, we can use uh, Zoom thing um, in, inside the school, the school. So this helped a lot in, you know, um, setting up another teacher for the same class, and um, uh, it saved my uh, uh, the students' time also. Uh, this is part of my training. But actually, the most important thing for me in technology is. To, uh, to put some products for uh, globalization. Um, I mean, exchange ideas from, um, uh, from our countries to other countries. We act with these ideas um, in, in some projects. Like um, last, last year, we had a project with England about uh, environment and the pollution and how to with this problem. Of course, my students use the technology a lot because they search for solution for this, uh, for this idea. And also they chat with, the, uh, with their colleagues in, in England. And um, we had them, you know, uh, they emails and messages. Uh, we also teach them how to uh, make a video out of them, uh, make a video and send it back to them. Of course, they send this back to us again. So uh, the project is successful, and, um, and nowadays we have we have a sister school in uh, in England, actually. And we are going to start another project this year. 
I tried with one of my colleagues in the high school, um, but she is not, uh, she's not uh, available in our day. But we try, we try to do this again. Great. Um, and that actually starts to talk about our next question, um, which is about global competencies and international experiences. Um, so having, having um, lived and worked in the United States, you're in a unique position um, to bring this, this idea back to your schools. Um, what kind of global competencies or international experiences um, are you implementing in your school, school or district? And what has the impact been on your students? How has embracing um, global competencies and international exchange to help you as a leader? And Hanan, we'll start with you too, since you um, started on in on this. Okay. Um, I, I shared my experience with my students, not only with the teachers. Uh, last year, I visited my high school, and uh, this visit needs a lot of preparation. So I think, why not to, um, to join my students, not teachers, of course, but join my students because I need them to talk freely about themselves, and if they want to, um, to send something to, the, to their colleagues in the U.S., I would be the messenger for this. So I... I, said, I told um, the teachers and we met the students and they, uh, they are willing to help. Uh, some of them uh, made a PowerPoint for me, everything about uh, our culture from the Pharaonic, the, the Pharaohs the, uh, with the Islamic uh, culture and the Coptic culture, everything until today. Uh, others make another PowerPoint for art. And it, this was amazing because they, um, they got the dancing in every part in Egypt, music of every part of Egypt. Um, they also talk about uh, engineering and how we art in the engineering stuff in, uh, uh, during the, Islamic, the Islamic, uh, Islamic period and the Coptic period. Um, the most amazing thing is one of my students, she is uh, she just uh, the first the, um, in the eighth grade, and she said, why can I, can I make a video of myself? Can I make my daily routine uh, as a video? And it was amazing. It helps me a lot because they, they actually see the, the students. They actually see one just like them of their age. And uh, they know how to, uh, they, they see her, um, her room, her house. Uh, they see also um, uh, her daily routine. Like she, she wake up and go to and uh, for praying, and they saw her uh, praying uh, before going to school. They, they also saw her father taking her, driving her to school, and they asked about this. Uh, and they, see, they saw her uh, uh, going to the uh, swimming in her classes and everything. So um, it was amazing. It helps a lot um, there in, in the United States, and um, it produced a lot of questions about us and the difference between uh, between students and um, and the U.S. students. Um, that helps me uh, a lot uh, in, in in my student in the school, in the school itself, because my students now are so. Uh, anxious to uh, uh, to join any projects to uh, um, to join uh, uh, even uh, to, to, uh, to travel to the United States. One of them um, tried hard to uh, to join a university there after she, uh, after graduation. Again, this year we are we are doing another project, um, uh, starting a project. We just started um, a month ago. Uh, it's about culture, culture in different countries. Uh, we pick India and we pick uh, Palestine and we pick uh, Egypt. So we will have again another sister schools in these places. Great. Okay. Great. Um, and I know Zhang Hong, you mentioned um, that you had sister schools as well. Um, can you just take a minute to talk about? Um, the, the sister schools that you have and how you've introduced global competencies to your school? Okay, uh, about the sister school. And uh, first I started a uh, pen pal program. So 
the students in the Mandarin program in my sister school, they established a pen pal friendship with uh, my students. So they just, uh, you know, send emails and even they uh, talk through Skype uh, regularly. And I think uh, from this way, uh, in this way, first, uh, they each improve their language. And second, they uh, uh, became friends. I think that is very good. And also, <clears throat> I think uh, in, in my campus, I uh, try to share with my principals the importance of international exchanges after I participated in TCLP. And uh, uh, even though the school still need teachers teaching on the campus, still every year the school sends teachers to different countries to have exchanges. In this way, uh, they improve their teaching skills and I think, yeah, they, they just develop and they can contrib contribute more to the school. And the second, uh, on my campus, there are more than 50, uh, 150 foreign teachers and uh, students. And uh, I organize uh, uh, some uh, clubs, like uh, English club, Korean club, and a Japanese club. And uh, they learn foreign languages and uh, organize uh, very uh, cultural activities. Also, they have uh, uh, the uh, world uh, cultural presentations and even some celebrations of festivals like the Christmas concert, the Halloween party. And I think in this way, the students uh, become more open. Yeah. Great. So these are wonderful examples <clears throat> from all of our panelists about how you can bring back um, culture and language and technology and, and weave them all together um, to help your students learn more about the world. Um, before we move on to the next question, did anyone else, um, any of the other panelists want to share? Okay, is that? Go okay. ahead. Uh, actually, uh, TCLB has a great uh, back not only on the professional but also in, uh, on my life in general. Uh, for example, uh, I, had, uh, I had participated in, uh, in a competition about leadership, and this was the start of thinking of myself as a leader. Uh, also, uh, my school provided, my school in Berlington, Iowa, provided me a training called Love and Logic. Uh, I, I took some ideas, great ideas from this training, and I applied this in my life in bringing up my children, how to make uh, a balance between love, how to love them, but again, uh, set rules, set rules inside my house. Also, in, uh, concerning uh, leadership, uh, if we can uh, apply uh, this training on our position, uh, you know that the leadership dimensions, we have two dimensions. The concern of people uh, and their uh, social life and such stuff, and the product, their work. And also, uh, I learned from that uh, training how to make that balance, how, how to show concern and interest in, in the staff, the social life, uh, uh, and such stuff. And also, uh, think about the students and the product uh, of my school. Uh, in my school uh, in Iowa, I used it to, uh, to teach using the Polycom system. And uh, I also uh, taught using Skype and the WEDIC website. Uh, this also had a great impact on technology and, and using technology inside my school. Uh, I, I told you that I, 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 I started a project called Identification in my school with the help of a returnee teacher, and I should thank her. Uh, she was in uh, a study in, in uh, the UK, and she came back and informed me about that uh, uh, we can use different applications for teaching different uh, subjects. We, we, uh, it wasn't uh, famous in, in, in our district to use technology such stuff. So I, I called for a meeting for the school board who agreed to apply uh, this project. And also I called for a meeting for parents. What is great is that we made trainings for both uh, students and parents on these apps and they work it together. So every student with his uh, father or mother 
made some projects using uh, these apps. These apps are some apps for presentation. So they started to think how to present their lessons. So prepare it at home and then present it inside the classroom. Also some for, uh, for, for science, for example, how to do science experiments. Uh, uh, virtual, of course, virtual science experiments. And some for social studies, uh, like, uh, like uh, solar system programs uh, uh, and maps, of course, uh, uh, like Google Earth and such stuff. So it was uh, uh, great, but actually, I should be honest, we, we can apply this on just a small portion uh, of the school. We, we didn't have um, the carriage or even uh, the equipment uh, to, to apply this all over the school because parents had to, be, had to buy iPads for their students uh, on their own cost. I'm sorry I couldn't uh, provide the, the cost for them. Uh, so uh, everything in my TCLB program had uh, its impact. It's a good impact on my life in Egypt and also in my professional life. Thank you. Great, thank you for, um, for sharing that. Okay, um, so the next question, um, we're gonna um, talk about trainings um, as Zat started to, to discuss. Um, in what ways did TCLP trainings or experiencing US educational and government systems firsthand impact you? Uh, what best practices did you learn that you've incorporated in your educational community? Um, Chen, yeah, I want to start with you. Um, how did TCLP training um, and learning about the U.S. educational systems um, impact you? Um, first of all, I think that um, I have three points that I really want to mention. First of all, is that the orientation in D.C. Um, I really uh, remember the orientation in D.C. that um, TCLP arranged as various lectures about teaching uh, methodologies, classroom management, and, and during the orientation. Also, um, it trained us um, how to live independently and help us to reverse the culture shock. Um, it helps us a lot but before we start to work. So this is really important for us, orientation. And number two is that um, teaching Mandarin in the whole school. Um, this is a great chance for us to experience the real American class and also American school life and also American daily life. Um, we observe other teachers classes and also we learn the skill to communicate with the students and to collaborate with other subjects teachers. And also we can put the theory which we have learned in DC, the orientation and into practice in our Mandarin class. And number three is um, living uh, in the host families. Um, this is a very good opportunity for us to experience the real American life and American culture. So um, we can uh, tell and teach uh, the Chinese English teacher that um, what, what our experience is, okay? Great. And how did you bring these, these trainings and these experiences back to your school? How did they help you uh, with being an educational leader? Um, and then after I get all these ideas and then I just uh, go back to my school and then I just collect uh, all the, um, I mean, um, just what I have learned from TCLP and then I have some lectures. Now, first of all, um, uh, I just uh, give them a, uh, a round trip of the, uh, I mean, uh, of the uh, America, uh, because um, the most of the Chinese English teachers they have, they they do not have much uh, many uh, chances to go abroad to study. So they really want to know the firsthand material that you just bring back, and then um, they they just trust everything that you you say. And so um, I just tell them. Um, just, uh, I just uh, give them some photos of my English class, and then they will see what the student-centered class is like. And then I just give them some teaching plans to get to them and to show that for different levels and for different types of the students, then you have to a different teaching class for them. And they will know that, okay, and then I have to design my class for a different level. And also, um, uh, for, and also for assessment, and then we, we, we have to uh, just to, uh, for different level students and we do the different assessments. Um, and also uh, from this, I, I feel that um, 
also for uh, student centered this i mean this strategy and then this is not only for a chinese english teacher but i think that all the chinese teacher i mean for different subjects and they need to they need this mind i mean they need this concept so i just suggested my uh, principal that um, i really want to share this experience and also i want all the teachers to to, to just um, have the discussion with me. And also my school teachers, they are really interested in how to just change their roles in their English, I mean, in their uh, uh, class teaching. And then um, they just change their mind and then they think that, oh, we have to um, found uh, the students, uh, the, the students in interest point. And then um, they became, they just uh, think that now from the student's eye and then what the class that they really need. And so uh, my principal asked me to just have all the teachers a lot about this. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and is that, if we can come back to you, um, can you talk about what you learned from the American system and um, how that helped you with um, being an educational leader? Yes. Um, I, I said that uh, I, I first had the chance, I had many trainings in the US uh, either uh, part of the TCLEP program or even inside the classroom, uh, which affected me uh, positively uh, in my uh, classrooms. Uh, I, I, I had the training on using the Bellicom systems, uh, which I used to use. I used to teach Arabic for uh, different schools at the same time. And of course, this needs specific uh, techniques in managing the classroom, the aides, and the students. Uh, of course, when we come to apply this in, in, in Egypt, uh, when we had our uh, program, which is called the education, we need to think of new ways of managing the students. We have different kinds of problems inside the classroom, other than uh, the, uh, these ones in the normal or uh, uh, classrooms. So we started to think about uh, how to co how to cope with uh, with the new uh, things inside the classroom. Also, uh, teaching, uh, I, I taught using with it, uh, or with IQ uh, website, and this was also um, one of the things which we discussed, and we were going to to apply it in uh, in, in our schools. Um, also, love and logic, as I told you before, uh, has a great uh, because it is uh, what one of the most important uh, challenges that we need uh, as principals is to make this balance between uh, the, the product, I mean the interest uh, of the students, uh, the learning process itself, and to, to care for the staff. Of course, everyone has uh, his own problems, his own issues, and, and he, uh, he, he thinks that I should be aware of all uh, of this. So uh, um, I think my experience in TCLB has made a uh, big change to my life. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so you're talking a lot about your, your experiences in the US. Um, I wanna see, is there a particular person um, that helped guide you in becoming an educational leader? And if you could please share about how you were able to identify a mentor and some of the lessons you learned. Um, and Hanan, can we start with you? Yeah, um, I have once a principal, um, a principal in the Egyptian one, he taught me how to be uh, a boss. Um, and he was a very good friend for everyone. But at the same time, he is our, uh, our boss and our teacher, our guide. Um, he admires us and uh, respect our, uh, our beliefs and listen to, to us and um, he has a great confidence in us. That makes, makes every one of us um, big, feel like he is something. And I'm trying to follow his steps now when I, uh, in my position as a principal. I try to be, to be an inspiration for my, for my colleague. I try to be a positive and creative uh, person. I try to, um, to believe on them and to have great confidence on both teachers and, uh, and students. 
Uh, as for the mentors, um, I actually have a very good mentors. Although she's she was uh, my mentor in um, in in the U.S., she is um, she is the superintendent of my school, and she has a great ideas about globalization. She wants um, to do anything anything at all for her uh, for her students she wants them to learn how to live life beside others like they, she she believed that they should know the diversity in the world uh, they should know um, that we have we are different but at the same time we are the same uh, in some aspects um, she talked about everything in her school she um, Taught me how to uh, how to be positive with the, with the with the with the U.S. Uh, teachers. Um, she uh, gives me an idea about this, the um, U.S. Uh, the U.S. schools as a whole and um, how to deal in the class with the student, with their students because you know there is a great difference between our students and uh, the. the as students. Uh, I think this, she is the real mentor for me. And I think if you want to be a leader, you should be a very good mentor first. Great. Do you have any advice for other TCLP alumni and how they can go about finding a mentor like this? Uh, I think we can shoot them the, the open mind people. Um, the one who accept the, um, the newcomers uh, with everything, <laughs> with their goodness, with their badness, everything. And um, try to be um, uh, close to the, to the newcomers because, you know, we are not uh, familiar to the U.S. students. We are not familiar to the U.S. schools. We are not familiar to the U.S. Uh, people. Um, and we are different. We have different concepts now. So if you want to be a mentor, you should, you should um, be aware of all these differences uh, and uh, try softly to, uh, to reach the heart of that newcomer to, the, to this person. Because we we uh, we feel like um, <laughs> we feel like uh, we are we are stranger. We are not uh, we, we don't we don't belong to this place. So if you can if you can just um, give the the newcomers uh, the idea that you no you're not um, a newcomers. You are part of us. You can um, you can do uh, just like just like us. You are a friend. I think this is the good mentor. And this is what Leah had done with me. I feel like a part of the family. I don't feel like stranger in her house, ever. And, and also in, the school, in, 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 the, in both schools, the middle school and the high school, I don't, I don't feel um, stranger. Uh, I just feel like one of them. Uh, even in my second visit, I feel like um, um, I, a friend, a missing friend. They miss me, and I miss them, of course. So I think that that's the, a good mentor. Great. Thank you. Um, so the next question is, um, what further impact um, do you want to have on your school and your district? or your educational institutions in your home country, so in Egypt and in China. Um, what, what else do you want to do as a leader? What are you still working on? Um, Chen Ya, can we start with you? Me, um, especially just the, this year, and then our school has a task for me to build the other uh, sister schools, uh, to build other sister school relationships. And then so um, I just still contacted with the um, uh, some uh, schools from Canada and also Singapore. And also I really want to um, um, connect our school with my whole school during my stay in America. And then um, because um, not only for the exchange of this, I mean, for the students, but also our principal realized that the importance of, of training a teacher. 
So they really want the teachers to go abroad to see, because just only uh, I talk about a lot about what is the, the, it is just only from my view, from my eyes, and then they cannot understand um, very clearly. But if they just go out and then they just uh, just go to that school to experience what the teaching like in the uh, American class, and then they will know that, okay, and then when I go back, and then I will just think, oh, suppose now I am in America, I am in that this kind of class, and then I will just... Yeah, and I think that they will know what the student-centered strategy is very, very clearly. So our principal really want the teachers to have this training. And then so um, we just have this task to build a relationship for the teachers to go abroad to training uh, just to, uh, for some sister schools, um, just, just for example, in America, in Canada, or in Singapore, like this. Okay? Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Zhang Hong, what about you? Um, what further impact do you want to have on your school district or educational institutions in China? Okay, uh, right now um, I hope that I can do more to um, improve the education for global understanding uh, in my home country. Because um, I think um, for many schools, the uh, international exchanges are pretty common, but how to make these exchanges um, part of the courses to make it more systematic, to help more students benefit more from these kind of exchanges, not just, uh, well, okay, today we host a delegation from US and uh, then tomorrow they go and uh, this is just a very short time experience. I hope that really the students will become more cross-cultural aware, be more open, and to get to know the differences and the similarities between different cultures. They uh, get to know more about the outside world. And at the same time, and uh, <clears throat> I hope my students can um, introduce the Chinese culture to the outside world. And uh, um, anyway, uh, to, to make the uh, different activities uh, just uh, set down as courses. I think that is my goal. Yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, Azat, can you tell us about the goals that you have, um, the impact you want to continue to have in your school and district? Okay, thank you. But if you don't mind, I, I wanted to go back a little. Uh, I, I'd like to thank Mr. Ronald de Glasgow, the principal of uh, Notre Dame High School, and Mr. Richard and Shea, the, uh, the mentor teacher, uh, both in uh, belonging to Notre Dame High School. In Egypt, Mr. Hussein Mohammed Said, the previous principal, both of them, or the three of them, were just helpful and supportive. And leaders are highly evaluated when they create other leaders. So this is really important, and this should be one of our uh, maybe future plans, how to create other leaders. Uh, concerning this question, uh, the first impact I would like to have, uh, I have three keywords, decentralization, instructional leadership, and the more technology. The first word, decentralization. You know, uh, sometimes the Ministry of Education don't know much about what is going inside our school. And simply by applying rules, uh, 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 they, up, uh, they apply rules and they stop what we are trying to do. So uh, this is one important thing. I hope that we have more uh, freedom inside our schools, not to refer in everything in the, to the district and, and also to the Ministry uh, of Education. The other uh, point is instructional leadership. Uh, for sure, uh, uh, what I mean by instructional leadership is that uh, the principal has to do a lot of things which are directly related to the educational process, to the learning process, not only to papers and, and to, to apply rules and such stuff. For sure, in Egypt, up till now, what they have in their mind about the principal is only is only to apply rules and and to manage the building, uh, the cleanliness of the school, and such stuff. And he has nothing academically to do. In my own school now, in, in, the, in the KSA, we have what we call an educational manager and the principal. 
the educational manager acts as the instructional leadership. So I'm dreaming of having uh, maybe either such a, a separate job as an educational manager or to be a, a vital part of the principal uh, job is to uh, is to to have knowledge about learning process, about the new technology, about the new methodology, how our thing is going inside uh, the classroom. Also, the third impact I, I, I'm dreaming of is, uh, of course, more technology. We have a lot of technology, but they are not used in, uh, in the best way. So I hope, inshallah, in the future, uh, we can uh, use technology and education in the correct way. Thank you. Great. And you um, transitioned perfectly into our next question, um, which is what skills do TCLP alum need to be an educational leader? Um, how did you develop these skills? And how would you recommend a TCLP alum to further build these skills? So um, if we could move to Hanan, if you could tell us about, um, we heard about um, some instructional leadership. Um, what, what do you think that a, a leader needs to have to, uh, to succeed? Um, I, I said before, but uh, the leaders should have, uh, should be honest with himself, should have a very good communication uh, with people around, like uh, teachers, students, uh, parents, and of course, administration. Um, because I learned from, from the U.S. schools and from the TCLP that you can build a support if you are in the school and you need someone, uh, you can have these people as a supporting for you. And this is what happened now in my school. Parents are very supportive. Uh, they, uh, some of them try to be volunteer. They are, they are in the school maybe um, every day asking if they can do something for the school uh, to volunteer, helping the, the admin staff, um, to volunteer, uh, uh, giving giving the school some, uh, you know, stationaries because Egypt, uh, Egypt schools is not that rich. So we always need, um, need some support from, uh, from the surrounding. And parent, parents of the school, uh, in the, this school, uh, are doing this, uh, that thing. Also, I learned a lot from the TCLP. One of them is that... Um, I was, I was a teacher, actually, bef uh, sorry, I, I was a principal, uh, actually, before go going to the, um, to the U.S. Uh, for the elementary school. Uh, and I was uh, depending totally to solve my, quest my problems on the, uh, the administrators and the district. Um, my experience with the TCLP and the, school, the U.S. schools, um, I, uh, I start to be more positive and independent. I don't wait for the, the administrators or the district to solve my quest, my, my problems. Um, I tried with teachers, students, and the parents uh, first before taking the problem to the end. And um, in many times, most of the times, it, it, they help and the problem solved. Like nowadays, we are doing some decoration in the school. Um, I realized that uh, the world in the school is very dull and it look very um, old. And uh, I don't have the material, I don't have the, the money to, uh, to get painting for the school. So um, I met with, the, with some of the parents and I told about this idea and they said, okay, let's do it together, but we need to share the students in, in this. And of course, we are doing this now uh, we are decorating students paint uh, with their hands. Uh, the art teachers uh, design what they, they are going to do, and some of them make posters and pictures and so on. So I think this this is very um, very independent. So um, and I hope this will last for for many schools. Thank you. Great. So I'm hearing instructional leadership communication skills, delegating, don't do everything yourself, um, work with others, um, and being kind and open. Um, I'm hearing all of those as, as leadership skills. Um, what do you recommend that TCLP um, teachers do, or alumni do, to gain these skills? Um, do you have trainings that you recommend or um, 
how, how do you recommend that um, other TCLP alumni start to build these skills? Um, Azat, can we start with you? Thank you. Thank you. Um, to be a, a leader, uh, you have to do two things, <coughs> study and practice. Uh, I recommend a website called idara.com. Idara.com, which is like administration.com, is a good website uh, which has a lot of materials for uh, for that uh, for uh, principles. Also, I, I got a, a diploma in Egypt called BS3 or Professional Soft Skills Diploma, where I learned it, uh, about planning, making a team, team building, uh, also uh, about active listening, uh, body language, uh, and uh, such a stuff. Uh, the second uh, part is to practice. Uh, what I mean is practice is um, to have some roles inside the, the, the schools before being a president. Uh, I, I mean, you should volunteer, do some tasks that, uh, that I, uh, are done by the principal inside the classroom as a volunteer and without any cost, only some time. Uh, so uh, through practice uh, first and the study, uh, I, this, I think this is the way to be a good leader in the future, inshallah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Zhang Hong, can you, can you tell us about um, working with communication skills and um, how you recommend that others can build these skills? And first, I think, uh, be open and to get to know more about uh, strong teachers and experts and educational leaders uh, around you and take the initiative to say hi to them and be eager, be always eager to learn new things. Great. And also, yeah, I think every experience counts. So sometimes I think, well, it is impossible to, for me to recommend um, the most important things, but anyway, and do every bit of work well and uh, try new things, yeah. That's it. Good advice. Okay, and um, Chenya, we'll, um, we'll end with you for this question. Um, what resources or um, what do you recommend other TCLP alumni to use or to do to help build their leadership skills? Um, I mean, um, for to, how to build their, first of all, um, they have to have a strong will that um, I really want to be the leader. And then they will just have the will to be to, to just share the leadership. And then how to be a leader? First of all, that not only just I am the leader that okay, and then you just listen to me, and then just everything is just is, is up to me. But you have to do the service for others. And then you, you have this mind, and then you will just uh, just really want to share this, and then you you can just tell this the the others that what you have experienced. And also, I think that experiencing is really, really important for, a, for the leadership. Because you have experience, and then you tell them the first-hand material, and then uh, they, they will just uh, trust you. And then, um, and also, you have to create the chance uh, to just communicate others. Now, first of all, just to open your mind, and then you, you just try to say hi. But after this, and then you, you, really, you have to show that you are really uh, willing to help others. And be just um, they, they make some uh, problems and then in their teaching and then they just come to you and then just you, you just give them some advice on teaching or on directing so um, they feel that you're an expert always that um, my mentor told me that you have to train yourself that you're very very professional and so that everybody can trust you and then they will think that okay and then yeah yeah what, what you're talking about and then just from your experience so first of all, I think that to learn more and then to experience more is really important for you to just build the leadership. Great. And that's not always trainings or big conferences too. It can be anything from, from like being open to others in your school or reading books. Um, those are all ways that you can, can learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also we, we have some books on this kind of topic and then we can just read some books about this. Yeah. 
Okay, um, well that is the end of our um, questions. Before I close though, do any of the panelists want to add anything else to share with the rest of the alumni? We're not done yet, but we're just wrapping up the questions portion here. Nothing else? Okay, um, Zara has something that she um, wants to, to do, start closing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, big thank you to our panelists. Um, every time I, we are at this type of alumni conferences, it's amazing to hear what you are all achieving. And you know what's the most heartwarming part? Is seeing your faces, hearing your voices. That's the minute that we know that we really miss you. <laughs> And though uh, the world seems very small, that we can see each other over uh, this type of a platform. But I don't know. I would have loved to see you all in person. And I'm sure that uh, Elise, Ever, and Samantha would join me in this wish. And the world is small, somewhere we will meet each other again in person. But for now, this is the platform that we have the capacity of seeing you.